Hey guys, welcome back to Love and Junk. I'm John. Today I'm going to show you how I attempted to recreate a bookshelf from Wayfair. Today I'm going to recreate this. I found this on Wayfair when we were looking at items for our living room and I decided, like, why buy this from Wayfair when I could build it myself and make it look a lot better, hopefully. So uh, this project I've already finished, but you can see the journey along the way. Uh, it took a lot longer than expected. I do believe I'm gonna make some more of these, but um, in the process should get a lot better. Uh, but this was kind of experimental in like had some questions as far as integrity of the actual structure so um, i worked it up and it, it's pretty good but uh, here's how i made it
back in the garage and back working on the shelf. So before I take it apart, because it's just put together right now as a mock-up, uh, there's some edges that need to be cleaned up. Um, make sure everything is kind of smooth. So I'm going to do that before I take it apart. That's next. Alright, I got my mask on. Ready to go. Alright, so I got that sanded down. Only took a few minutes. Um, but, uh, you know, it's never going to be like a fine woodworking. Uh, this is some scrap wood that I found. Got for free, side of the road, something like that. I've been carrying this stuff around with me forever. So it's nice to be able to finally do stuff with it. Uh, next step, I'm going to take this thing apart. We're going to fill some holes. We're going to do some more sanding. Um, and I think I'm going to do a paint pour on part of the wood.
All right, so continuing on with this project. For you, it's only been probably a couple seconds. For me, it's been days. One of the reasons is um, that paint, the paint pour, really takes a long time for it to dry. So you have to give that ample opportunity. So that took probably about two days. Um, and then also, I got this horrible cold. You can probably tell my voice. Um, so that kind of took me out of commission for a couple of days. But I came up here to look at the backboard on the shelf. And it's okay. I'm, I'm not that happy with it. I like the patterns um, in there, but the colors seem kind of washed out. They're not as bright as I want them to be, and know, it just doesn't stand out. It's not what I was looking for. So what I am going to try to do is uh, and I've done this before on some of the tables that we've done an acrylic pour on, is um, use some epoxy. So I've got this um, premium quality clear epoxy resin. I got this from the epoxy resin store online and they ship it right to your house. We've got part A, part B, uh, and this is some older stuff. I've used this definitely before on uh, some other projects, uh, some tabletops and stuff like that. And I really like this product. Uh, product. I have some more. I have a newer, um, you know, unopened bottle. Um, but I'm gonna use this on this one. This part B has gotten a little yellowed and I really hope that it wouldn't affect the final um, product but um, this is a great product to use this on if I were to do a tabletop or something like that I would not want to use something that I was it was questionable as far as whether it would be clear or what so because I'm just kind of messing around with this and kind of learning this as this is my first time doing this project um, let's try it out so when mixing this type of epoxy, um, I usually use these plastic cups you can get at Walmart or whatever grocery store. Um, I like the clear so you can see what level uh, because you're gonna do equal parts of part A and, and part B. Um, I'm gonna use these two smaller cups and pour them out individually and then mix them in a larger cup. Um, once you pour them, you know, it usually takes about five minutes of stirring uh, to get everything you know mixed correctly um, and then pour it right on the product I have to keep coming back uh, I'll have to look for my blow torch because you want to torch the um, epoxy while it is liquid like um, to get the bubbles out I think that's probably a good amount now I don't want to overdo it on the resin. I only want a very thin, thin layer. Uh, it'll help make the color pop. But, um, you know, I want to make sure that I have enough. I would hate to have to, I've done it before, where you have to mix another batch in the middle. It's not too bad, like on a tabletop or anything, because, uh, you know, a lot of times you know you're going to need more. Um, so part B, which is the thinner stuff, part A, that's the thicker stuff. All right, I'm gonna pour part B in first. This is more liquidy. Since part A is um, thicker, you know, it'll start to mix already once you get it poured. One of the reasons I really like this uh, type of epoxy uh, is because there isn't as much odor. 
some of the other epoxy I've used in the past, um, boy, you just, I mean, it still has an odor to it. It just won't go away. And I think that was more of like a marine epoxy that I got. Um, just, you know, it was cheaper. Some of this epoxy can get expensive. As far as this epoxy from the resin store, um, not too bad, not too bad at all. Hey guys, well, welcome back to John's Messy Garage. Um, this is how it looks after the epoxy is on it. So there is a little bit more color pop. I, I like it a lot better. And then where I had the blue painter's tape, let's see if I can get this to focus. Just where that was able to, I was able to peel that off. I mean, I think it looks great. The epoxy is so, so, so thin. But there's still some sanding to be done. So there's some paint that kind of bleached through there. Um, and then some areas where the epoxy won't let me take the tape off. And then on the back, we did get some drips coming through uh, the, the drill holes that I made um, so that's got to be drilled out again you know sanded down and drilled out I've also got it on this towel because during the sanding process um, the epoxy will get scratched if we're not careful uh, right now I'm using the rotary sander and let's see 220 grit on there and that should be okay. all done now let's do the big reveal so you can see how it looked finished here's the bookshelf it is an interesting size I mean it's not too bad it's tall enough that you could put it on the floor if you want to uh, but it's short enough that if you had the right tabletop you could also put it on tabletop so um, I don't know. I like it. I like it. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. Uh, I did make a lot of mistakes, um, but I didn't really care. I made it from reclaimed wood, so I'm using something that was basically destined for the trash heap. And uh, I think I made something nice. Uh, maybe somebody will want this or, you know, 
maybe we'll just keep it here in our living room. But I think I'll list it on Facebook Marketplace, or at least Laura will, and uh, see if anybody wants it. I like the project. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it better next time. But I do like the rustic feel of it. I like that it's not perfect. I like that it has some character. The original piece from Wayfair was kind of plain. Gotta find some more reclaimed wood though. I do like working with reclaimed wood. You know, why throw something away that you can redo uh, and get some more life out of? Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Give us a like, give us a subscribe. We'll catch you next time. Peace out guys, bye.